to, uh, to supper, and he had said, as he did with the elders, so uh, how did you come to Christ? Well, before becoming a chaplain, I was serving on a naval battleship in the South Pacific, living a reprobate life. And, and you know, it was the strangest thing. We were docked in Sydney. So, and we were getting some supplies. And, and, you know, on the shore I got badly drunk, and, and I was confused and got on the wrong bus, and I ended up on George Street. And, and, and you see, a, a man jumped in front of me, and, and he pushed a pamphlet in my hand and asked, Salem, if you die tonight, would you be ready for heaven? And the fear of God hit me. I was shocked sober. And I made my way back to the ship and found the chaplain, and he led me for, to Christ. And I studied the ministry, uh, studied for the ministry under his guidance. And now, after all these years, I'm a leader in the Navy Chaplain Corps. Now, this, this, this man, this, this preacher is just absolutely beside himself. Now, now, I told you to buckle your seatbelts, and you didn't believe me. He says, God, what are you talking about? No, you didn't believe me, but you, you better hang on, okay? See, six months later, that London preacher flew to a convention for Indian missionaries in a remote corner of northeast India. And the head missionary took him home for a meal. And, of course, the pastor asked him, how did you become a Christian after growing up Hindu? And he said, well, I was very privileged. I was a diplomat. I worked for the, for the diplomatic service. And I happened to be on a trip to Sydney, Australia. And I was doing some last minute looking around on George Street. And I was laden with toys and clothes for my children. And, and, and this little man happened to jump in front of me and gave me a pamphlet. And he asked me, if I happened to die, would I be ready for heaven? And he said, I didn't know what he was talking about. And he said but the, the, this was just very strange. And it disturbed him all the way back to, to his home. And so he went and he talked to, to the Hindu priest about it. And he said, well, he just, he, you know, he just didn't really know how to, how to help me understand this, and then I talked with him enough that he finally became exasperated, and he said, well, goodness, if you want to know about it, the, the Christian missionary is down at the end of the road in the little house. Why don't you go get your questions answered from him? And he said, well, that was a faithful uh, bit of, uh, of advice, because I went down there, and, and, and he, he not only satisfied my curiosity, but he led me to Christ, and I became a missionary myself, and now I lead this group of missionaries in this part of India. But not only that, because eight months after, after this story, that pastor was ministering in Sydney. Now, he just so happened to ask the pastor of this church that he was in. He said, now, I just have to know. Do you know of a little white-haired man that happens to give out pamphlets on George Street? And he said, oh, I do, actually. His name is Mr. Ganor. And, but I don't think he does it anymore because he's too elderly. And, but the pastor said, well, I have to meet this man. And he said, well, I know where his apartment is. And so they go to his apartment, and a very, very frail man, very elderly, he comes to the door, and he's you know, shaking, and, and he invites them in. He gives them some tea with some difficulty. And, and the pastor sits down, and he says, I have to tell you what's happened over the, the last however many months, years. And, and he, he accounts... Uh, gives them the accounts of all his travels of how all these different people from different parts of the world and different walks of life had said they had come to Christ because of a little white-haired man, or years before of just a little man, who had given them a tract. And the man just sat there with tears streaming down his face. He said, can I tell you my story? He said, I was a sailor, a sailor on, a, on an Australian warship, living a terrible life. And in a time of crisis, my life just hit the wall. And one of my colleagues that I had given such a hard time was there for me. And he led me to Christ. And my, the change in my life was so profound. And I was so grateful to God that I promised that I would witness for him just simply, in a very simple way, to 10 people a day. And nothing big. Now, just trying to connect with 10 people a day as, as he gave me strength. I didn't stress about it. It wasn't a work or anything. It was just as I had the opportunity, as God brought people in my path, I would do it. He said, I got lots of rejections, uh, but I, I, I figured out that if I was on George Street, there were so many people there that that was probably the best place to just do, do my ministry. I've been doing this for 40 years. And he said, you know what, I have never heard of anyone coming to Christ 
in all of these 40 years as a result of this until today. That takes commitment, friends, and sheer love for Jesus to continue to do that 40 years without any results. And those stories were probably just a small portion. I mean, you think of, of 10 people a day for 40 years? He probably witnessed around 146,000 people in those years. It's a lot of people. Just a simple interaction. Two weeks later, Mr. Gnor died. What a great gift God gave him at the end of his life. To know that he had been faithful and fruitful in his ministry. And who knows, except for God, how many people he really touched, how many people really came to him. And as I said before, his face, like ours, it wasn't on any magazines. People didn't know his name in every television newscast uh, around the world. But see, people knew his name who had met him. They, or maybe not his name, but they knew his face. They knew that there was this little white-haired man who had made such a difference in their lives. Now, the way you serve God is going to be different. I don't know what He wants you to do because it's up to between you and Him. You see, it, it, may, it may be giving somebody a pamphlet and asking a question, or, or it, may, it may just be interacting with your neighbors and, and, and maybe not interacting with, uh, you know, a hundred, thousands of people, 146,000 people over that many years, but it may be interacting with just a handful of people every day for years and years and years, and then finally something happens in their life. Because, because the thing is, God knows exactly how He wants us to share His love. He knows exactly who He wants to put us in contact with to make the difference for Him. And so really, it's just up to you asking Him. So I don't know. But one thing I do know is God uses ordinary people to make an extraordinary impact on the world. <laughs> We're all ordinary people. We're not famous. We're just living our lives, doing our best, following Him, seeking His will. But as you open your heart to Him, as the, as the Hebrew midwives and many obscure people that we'll never know over history say, yes, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. Your grace has filled my heart. Your love, your, I, I, I serve you. I want to give back to the people around me. So how is God leading you today is my question. What is he wanting you to do? Because if you do it, wow. When you, get to the, when you get to heaven, boy, God is going to show how big of an impact you made on the world. Amen. God uses ordinary people to make an extraordinary impact on the world. And to him. Amen. Will you be ordinary with me today? <laughs> I'm very thankful. As we, as we end and as we contemplate this, as we think about how God wants to work through us, will you sing with me? Trust and obey. That will be our closing hymn today. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. Trust and obey. Amen. That is hymn number five in the pool, five lines in the
Father God, today we think about what it means to be an ordinary person and how privileged we are that as ordinary people, you still use us to make an, ordinary, an extraordinary impact on the world. Amen. Today, I just ask that you will guide us, that you will show each one of us who you want us to connect with each day, how you want us to share and spread your love and grace to the world around. 